Well, good afternoon. I'm delighted to be here, and thank you, Juget, for that introduction. And thank you, Joe, for the opportunity to be here. I'm, I'm really delighted. It's, uh, you know, it's the worst place to be, to be the uh, very last speaker. It's, uh, everybody wants to get out. Some of you have flights to catch, and um, most of the information has already been covered in one place or another. I feel a little bit like an Oreo cookie. Uh, yesterday morning, you started your your sessions with my colleague, Dean Allison, and uh, here I am at the very end. I once had a music professor who insisted that I learn my pieces from the end because she said it didn't matter what you did in the middle, as long as you finished well, you'd be okay. So I do hope that, like the Oreo cookie, that the middle has been the best part, though. And uh, Mahmoud, I, I don't have a quote in my, in my remarks, but if I follow your lead, I would like to use the quote from the poem Invictus that says, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And if there's one thing that I would like to see for the continent of Africa is that that is the quote that people take forward and, and take seriously for what they can do with their own natural resources. And that's my hope for the countries of Africa. Over the past two days, you've heard from experts. You've heard from individuals with extensive experience in development, from government leaders, business experts, and academics. And I really regret that I've been unable to spend any time with you except my brief session yesterday, because this is an issue about which I care passionately. I care passionately as a businesswoman, I care passionately as a student of economics, and I care passionately because I have a very personal interest in uh, the health of Africa. You see, I, I have a personal connection. My daughter is married to Dr. Kofi Asante, who has a doctorate in electrical engineering. And uh, Kofi is now taking his experience and my daughter, by the looks of it, back to Ghana, to where he wants to be a catalyst to use his expertise in alternative energy capacity. Kofi knows that the resources are available to make Ghana successful and to have a vibrant economy, and he wants to be a catalyst in seeing that happen. I had a very wonderful conversation with Dr. Adam Mills last night, and. Uh, we uh, hope that we'll have many conversations in the future. Our government believes that with proper management, natural resources, especially in the extractive sector, can be the economic driver of a successful economy. Last year, the Foreign Affairs Committee looked at how we can engage the private sector in achieving Canada's international development objectives. We had many NGOs in front of our committee, you get, you were one of them, as well as bankers and builders, farmers and financiers, and miners and manufacturers. It was clear that helping countries find their and develop their comparative advantage would be the move towards sustainable economic growth. And I was very pleased yesterday in her remarks to hear Dr. Liberté emphasize that very same thing. The Canadian Development Agency recently was realigned, or the Canadian government realigned the Canadian Development Agency with the Department of Foreign Affairs to give additional weight to the responsibilities of development. We see it as the critical third leg of the stool. We have foreign affairs, we have trade, and we have development and it puts our development priorities on an equal basis with diplomacy and trade. We remain committed to poverty alleviation, and we remain committed to responding to, man to humanitarian crises. Canada continues to maintain a significant presence in Africa. CETA undertook nearly half of its assistance last year in Africa. Seven of our countries of focus are located on the African continent. Our government doubled our aid to Africa, and, and we untied that aid to allow greater impact. But Africa's natural resource wealth is undeniable. With 10% of the world's oil fields, 
40% of the world's gold and rich reserves of chromium and platinum. And while it is true that political and economic instability have previously discouraged long-term investments, things are changing. Many African countries now see the potential of the extractive sector and understand the economic and social benefits it can create if properly harnessed. Jobs both inside the extractive sector and indirectly through the supply chain can be created. Canada was built on the benefits of our natural resources and we want to share that expertise with these emerging economies. We announced recently the new Africa Mineral Development Centre, which will provide technical and pub policy support to African countries. Likewise, the new Canadian International Institute for Extractive Industries and Development will offer Canada's expertise in strengthening natural resource governance. We're working to build the capacity of developing country governments to manage their resources in a sustainable and a responsible way. This means helping them develop clear and consistent mining codes, oil and gas laws, and transparent revenue systems. It means helping governments create and coordinate policies for human rights and for the environment. And it means helping governments strengthen their information systems. Canada's work in Tanzania is an excellent example. The mining sector there has played a significant role in the economic growth of Tanzania. And with Canada's assistance, Tanzania now has more transparent and accountable regulations for its extractives. It raises public revenues and in turn, it is able to invest in public services. We are also working to grow businesses and improve local economic development. With support from CETA, World University Service of Canada, or WUSC, is providing direct skills training to 400 young people to help diversify the local economy. We enable communities to maximize the, maximize the benefits of the extractive sector through skills development for women, men, and youth. This assists the mining company to hire locally. Two years ago, I had the opportunity to visit the I Am Gold mine at Essekane in Burkina Faso. I saw the school where the students are sitting at brand new pristine desks and where they have terrific teachers. I saw the clinic that is populated with nurses who are very proud of their starched uniforms. And I visited the, the, the kitchen where the mine is using local produce to create nutritious meals for the miners and for the people who are working on staff. It's a remarkable, remarkable success story. So private sector is the driver of long-term economic growth. Canada's approach is to encourage local private sector development. We are committed to deepening our direct engagement with local and international private sector firms that can move individuals, families, and countries from poverty to prosperity. I was very privileged last Thursday night to speak at the conference in Toronto for the Canada-Nigeria Investment Council. And it was with great pleasure that the day before, our foreign trade minister had just signed a FIPA, Foreign Investment Protection Act, with Nigeria. These are the kinds of opportunities that Canada is looking to explore because we know that that is going to grow economies for emerging countries. Canada is building bridges between developing countries, private sector interests, civil society, and donors. And these partnerships will foster development that will reduce poverty and create economic opportunities today and tomorrow. I commend each one of you for taking time to be here. Joe to the North South Institute for making this possible. And even though I wasn't able to be here with you, I know that this whole uh, seminar has been taped and I do look forward to getting a copy of it and being able to review all of this and share it with my colleagues. So congratulations to each and every one of you and I look forward to working with you in the future.